So fonts are truly one of the few things uh, that can really make or break your designs. Uh, choosing the right or wrong ones can really step up your game uh, and step up your designs and your work uh, or can really make you look like a beginner. So today I want to show you my really simple and straightforward process to choose uh, the right fonts uh, for each and every single one of your projects and at the end of this video you're gonna end up with a very simple workflow that allows you to always find the best fonts for your projects uh, so you're not gonna waste like hours uh, to end up with crap results. The most critical step uh, in making your design uh, looks professional uh, is art direction uh, and it is very important to understand what art direction is and it's basically the marriage between fonts, colors, images uh, and layout. Uh, if you design everything with stock images uh, and everything looks beautiful and flawless uh, but when clients put images uh, into the design uh, and the final website the entire thing is kind of feels like ruined, don't worry, that's not your fault but clients sometimes have crappy photos. Choosing the right fonts uh, strictly depends on the other direction of the project uh, and you can kind of gather the information of the other direction of the project just by looking at the brand identity of the brand or the agency or your client and the color palette. So the first step of my entire workflow is to look and to understand the eye direction of the project and the brand identity of the agency that I'm working with. I look at the color palette, the photos of their products, all those kind of things, but I need to make sure to get the first step right because otherwise all the other steps are gonna be completely off. It is an extremely simple step, and if you wanna practice it, just create some mood boards, write some keywords down like elegant, maximalism, bold, minimalism, all the words, the keywords that come to your mind when you look at the mood board, extract maybe some color palettes and then you can actually create your own art direction for your mood board. Now that we've got the first step out of the way and we have everything set up, the second thing that I always do is to actually look for fonts. And there are millions of fonts archive out there and you can choose whatever you want, which one you want, but what I usually use is fonts in news. Already in the homepage we have a lot of options in terms of fonts. If we use the menu we have like 2500 fonts for events, film and video, 800, another 1600 for magazine and periodicals. It's crazy the amount of fonts that we have at our disposal. So what I usually do from the art direction of the project, I write some keywords down and I try to filter this entire list, this entire archive by the keywords that I wrote down from the art direction. This step saves me a lot of time in looking for new fonts. It allows me to focus on the ones, on the styles that are actually relevant for the project that I'm working on. And you can simply use something like serif, sans serif, mono, slab, so the main style of fonts. Then you can use something like editorial, minimal, bold, sport. All those kind of words are extremely helpful when looking for fonts. One perfect example would be to look for something like sport, as we mentioned Nike. And the thing here is to not always look and focus to the actual fonts, but look at the references that the website provides you because in that way you can really understand the use cases of each font. So for something like Nike we want a font that has to look for references that have a really big visual impact. So something like this one or Earth, this is a really nice one for something like Nike. We don't, we are not looking for the ones that Nike are using but something that can really fit the brand. So bold, sans serif, this is a really important one, we don't want to use serif fonts. Something that has a really heavy visual impact. This is a simple design that I've created just to show you what I'm talking about because otherwise I'm just rambling around us. We can use something like that, this like 8-bit serif font. As you can see, it looks nice as a font itself, but it doesn't fit the Nike brand. Instead of, as I said, we want something really bold with a really big visual impact, something like PP Rygrotes from Pangram Pangram. It can be a really nice fit. As you can see, it has like this editorial vibe. It could up more real estate in the design and it has a bigger visual impact in the entire design making everything more like towards the sporty vibe and if we choose something like a serif typeface something like that but maybe regular or ultralight you can see that the design has a different vibe it is not necessarily looking bad but it doesn't 
feel like Nike. And everything comes from the brand identity and the photos of their shoes, of their products. So again, this step is strictly related to the first one. And if you get the first one wrong, this one and the, all the other steps are gonna be completely messed up. And by the way, stick around because uh, later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how I personally use and apply the entire workflow on a single design. So <laughs> you definitely wanna stick around, guys. Now we've got the other action of the project uh, and we have some tabs open uh, in our browser with some fonts that we think uh, that fits in the style of our brand and our art direction. Don't download them yet. Uh, the next step uh, is actually to find some references uh, that prove uh, that our font choices are actually right. And what I mean by that is to find references and to look for other works uh, in the same style that you're looking for and that you wanna create uh, in the same industry, for example, Nike, sport, uh, some references in the fields that you're working in and see if your font choices are actually right. Prove yourself uh, that your choices are actually the ones that can work in your design. So let's go on our old time friend Pinterest uh, and sticking to the same topic, uh, Nike, we can look for something like Nike posters uh, and see what other designers already done in the past. Uh, if actually my idea of the fonts to use uh, for my project and for my design were actually right. So here we can see that, again, <laughs> bold typefaces, uh, sans serif one or slab ones, uh, we don't have much like serif typefaces. And so we were on the right path. And as you can see here, all the designs uh, are sans serif, bold, with a very big visual impact and that's what we're looking for. And if you think that this step is actually, you're gonna create something that has already been created thousands of times, it is not actually like that because we are just focusing our work and our style to something that has already worked in the past for other brands and for other designers and we're gonna build on top of that. Now we are at the end of this step and we've done all our researches and now we can actually download all the fonts that we've previously opened in our tabs in our browser if we see that the art direction and the style of the fonts are actually right for the project or we can just repeat the researches tab for the fonts and download them to actually use them in our project. As you can see nothing crazy in this workflow but each time that I apply this entire process I make sure that my fonts are spot on for the project that I'm working on and unfortunately sometimes you don't have any choices because the client send you the font but whatever it doesn't matter but you know if you have freedom you can use this process and each and every single time that you apply it you are gonna make sure that your fonts are on point and spot on for your project. This is a project that I'm currently working on for a client and unfortunately I didn't have the opportunity to choose the fonts for this one. I think that there is room for improvement. These are the fonts that they chose. I don't think that they are extremely spot on. They are really nice but not really spot on for the brand identity of the actual brand and for their messaging. We are gonna look for other fonts that I think that are gonna work better for this one and I already wrote down some keywords uh, that I can use as filter for my fonts researches. So we can see that we have editorial, detailed, uh, lightweight, uh, boutique. Uh, this is the actual vibe that we want to get from the design. Uh, architecture, because this is an interior design studio. Serif and sans serif. Serif for basically subtitles uh, and sans serif for the big titles, uh, for the big sections. So the first step uh, is to actually get the other direction uh, and to write some keywords down, which we have already done here. And now we want to go on on uh, fonts archived websites uh, and look for fonts. Again, I'm gonna use fonts in use, but you can use whatever website you want uh, or you already know or you're most comfortable with. Uh, and we're gonna use uh, these keywords uh, as filters uh, so we can really focus on the right choices and on the right style. So I stumbled across a couple of options uh, and the first one is this Seri typeface, uh, which is a little bit on the bold side, but I think that because it has like these thin lines, uh, it has a lot of details, uh, it is uh, really elegant, so nothing really crazy bold. So I think that I'm gonna keep this one and try it later on in the design. I also found uh, Everett, which is a nice uh, and detailed uh, sans serif one for my titles uh, with these details, uh, cut off details of some letters. And another one, uh, which is another serif one. Uh, so if in case 
the other one doesn't work, I have a backup option. Second step, we're gonna go on Pinterest and look for some references to see if our fonts are right for the type of project that we're working on. So something like websites, <laughs> whatever, I'm a designer, I don't know how to spell design. And we can see that we are right with the fonts, we have the right style, some serif and some serif ones, the combination of both. Some serif ones are like not bold, but really minimal and elegant. If we find something like serif one, bold but not that much, like in a middle weight. So we've made the right choices and we can actually download the fonts and apply them into our design. So as you can see, spending the right amount of time in choosing fonts actually step up your game and step up your design quality by a lot. As you can see, the design turned out pretty well and I think that it is uh, way better than before. With the right fonts, uh, you can really make your designs shine. So I think that taking the time to choose the right ones and to do some researches uh, can really step up your game and differentiate yourself from all the other designers. Hey friends, this is my simple workflow when I need to find new fonts for my new projects. And just to recap everything, take the time to understand the art direction, the brand identity of the agencies that you're working with, find new fonts on the Fonts Archive websites, take the time to do your researches and to prove that your decisions are actually right and apply the fonts for each and every single project that you do. So if you've liked this video, smash the like button because it helps me a lot to understand if this content actually helps you and if you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed yet and I hopefully see you in the next video.